Hi there, I'm CJ Thompson from STEM Scopes. Yeah, I just said that. Anyway, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being cooped up inside, so I came out to enjoy the nice weather. At least, until it rains. Have you ever wondered why it rains? I mean, we all know the earth is covered with water, but how does it get up in the sky? And how do clouds form? And why does the water fall back down? Well, you know, these are questions we can answer by making a model. Let's do that. Uh, just in time, too. I think it's about to rain. Okay, to make our model, you'll need the following. A large container. It needs to be clear and has some way to seal it, like a cap. We're going to need some water. We'll need some salt. We'll need some food coloring. A pen or a marker, and I'm going to recommend some masking tape. And then you're going to need a way to record your observations. I'm also going to recommend that you get yourself a science buddy. Science is always better when you have someone to discuss your ideas and questions with. A uh, science buddy could be a grown-up like mom or dad. Maybe it could be your brother or a sister. And if your friends can't come over, maybe you can connect with them remotely. I have two science buddies. Laverne. And Shirley. Whatever container you're using, uh, you'll be making observations of what's going on inside. So if you're using a two liter bottle like I am, you're going to want to remove the label. Now I have a way of doing that that will leave it nice and clean. It does require hot water and scissors, so a grown up may be required. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to look, there's like a line of glue right here. You're going to go on the opposite side, take some scissors, and just put it underneath the label, and slice it. So that it hangs down like that. Okay, then you're going to run the water until it gets hot. And you're going to put some inside. You need enough so that it rests right along that line of glue, okay, right there. Then you just let it sit for a minute or two. And there you go. Now we're going to prepare the water. I've got 1,000 milliliters, which is one liter of water, which is about four cups. And I'm going to add 20 milliliters of salt, which is about four teaspoons. And I'm going to stir it up so it's nice and dissolved. And now I'm going to add a few drops of food color. Alright, there we go. If you don't have food coloring, you could skip that or try this. Uh, maybe you've got an old washable marker sitting around that's not even working anymore. Um, you can take that and just put it in the water. Uh, now, to make sure that the tip stays in there, I'm going to put a clothespin on it. There you go. Just let it sit there for a few minutes. And after a while, you'll have blue water. Here are a couple questions to think about. Question number one, why did we add the food color? How does that help us make our observations? Question two, why did we add the salt? In other words, how does adding salt make our model more like the water on the earth? You might want to discuss these questions with your science buddy. What do you think, Laverne? What do you think, Shirley? Now we're going to put the water in our container. So if you don't have a funnel, which will make it easier, then you might want to do it over a sink, just in case you spill any. 
There we go. And cap it up nice and tight. And then you want to mark the level. So you can use a Sharpie. I'm going to use a little masking tape. Make sure it's dry. And I'm going to mark right here a level of the water. I'm also going to put today's date, and it is 4 12. And there we go. Maybe you don't have a two liter bottle. Maybe you have something smaller, like a smaller drink bottle or a milk bottle. That's fine, you're just gonna use less water. Just remember this formula, which is basically one teaspoon of salt for every cup of water. Now it's time to find a location place our model so we can make observations. You're going to want a place that gets sunshine, so if you're going to stay indoors, a windowsill is a nice spot. Even better is maybe outdoors. Um, you can try a place like in the garden. You can find a place that's sunny, or you could find a place in the shade. If you have enough containers, you could try multiple locations, but try to make sure all the containers are the same size and the same type. Why do you think that's important? Maybe discuss it with your science buddy. And now it's time to wait, so just go about your ordinary routine. Let the container sit for at least an hour, maybe more, and then it's time to make some observations. You want to record the date and time of the observation, the location of the bottle, the weather conditions including temperature and sky conditions, and what it looked like inside the bottle. You might also want to draw what it looked like inside the bottle. So just keep making observations day after day for as long as you like. And when you're ready, it's time to show what you know. One way to do that is to take some of the important words and write them on index cards or maybe post-it notes like I've done. Then you can use these as a guide and have a discussion with your science buddy. Or you could make a concept map. Uh, you just take a big piece of butcher paper or poster, or if you've got notebook paper, that's fine, and arrange the words in a way that makes sense to you. You can add arrows and drawings to help you show the relationship between these ideas. And the most important thing is, have fun. Okay, everybody, bye! Say goodbye, Laverne. Say goodbye, Shirley.